Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the Knit by Day podcast. I wish I could tell you what episode we are on, but I am totally lost in it, so whatever. If you are new here, my name is Deja. You can find me on Instagram at Knit by Day or on Ravelry at Days Jam. That's D-A-Y-S-J-A-M. All right, today is December 12th, and the only reason I know that is because I have been happily trudging through, trudging is probably a negative word, but I have been doing Vlogmas, and I've actually been keeping up with it, which has surprised me. Of course, I do have an advent calendar of yarny goodness, so that's definitely been some incentive to film. Obviously, if you pay me in yarn, I'm willing to do anything, so... In order to open my yarn, I have to press record, and that's probably the, been the best possible incentive you could give me. To start off today's episode, I do have a couple of things that I want to touch on. Um, the first was Vlogmas, which I've already done, so we're good there. And then also, I was thinking this year, um, the holidays are going to be a little bit different. A little bit more difficult due to what we all know is COVID. Um, and so I feel like I feel like I'm gonna need a boost, right? Like something cool to do or on Christmas Day that I wouldn't normally do. And I don't normally cast on a new project on Christmas Day. Um, I don't know why, I just don't. So I thought it would be cool to kind of cast on something for myself on December 25th, something that makes me happy. And I was hoping that you guys would join along with me. So I, right before I started filming, went ahead and opened a group up on Ravelry. And it is, I think it's titled like Christmas Day Cast On Cowl or something like that. Um, the only requirement to join is that you cast on on December 25th and just chat with us. Um, so like I said, I have that group on Ravelry. You're welcome to join us there. I already have a, a forum up there. Uh, I think it's just asking what you're planning to knit. And then you can also join on Instagram by using the hashtag knitbydaycal2020, which is just so creative, I know, but it's the best I could come up with on the spot. So that's what we're stuck with. So yeah, just Get started by letting me know what you're planning on making and we'll go from there. I will have this giveaway run through February 1st and that way it'll give time for those who are actually going to finish their projects time to finish. Um, and then from there I will announce two, give, two prize winners, um, which one, one will be from Instagram and one will be from Ravelry. So yeah. Be sure to join in on all the fun because I think that'll be super fun. One of my subscribers commented on the um, Vlogmas video where I had mentioned it and said that I should do a live video for it. Um, I think I might. So I know logistically it's going to be a little bit hard because I'll be spending a lot of time um, at my mom's and then transitioning to my dad's but I think I can make it work and I'd really love to do that so I believe the only way to go live and I might be wrong about this but I think the only way I can think to go live would be to do it on Instagram so that's where that would be um I still have time to say no but I think I might do that we'll see Oh, the other thing I wanted to talk about, and perhaps the reason a lot of you are here, is a couple of weeks ago on my Instagram, I posted a giveaway announcement. Um, and I said that the winner of that giveaway would receive this gorgeous mini set from Yarn Cafe Creations. And then also tuft woolens, um, sock soap for blocking, and tuft woolens um knitter's bomb which is incredible they're both incredible prod products and i don't think i have to tell you how incredible this yarn is you can see it um i have since closed that post and drawn a giveaway winner which is by the way an intense process unless there might be an easier way and i just forgot to go and i just made it way hard on myself who knows but 
the winner of that giveaway is GK Green Knits on Instagram. Yep. She didn't have her name um, listed on Instagram, so that's the only way I know her as. If you would please get in touch with me, congratulations by the way, um, get in touch with me, send me your address so I can get that in the mail to you as quickly as possible. Hopefully it'll be there by Christmas, but postage, you never know. All right, that seems, that seems to be uh, the extent of my announcements. So we can go ahead and get into my works in progress. Um, first things first, I haven't made any progress on the socks that I told you guys I was making up as I went along. Um, so I'm not even gonna show you because it's just, it's nothing. Uh, I honestly forgot about them until I started making this video, so now that I am reminded, I am likely going to pick them up maybe tonight unless I get distracted with something else, which is likely. I also haven't made any progress on my Weekender light, but I wanted to pull it out of hibernation because I wanted to remind you guys... It's just waiting for sleeves and I plan on getting like I I am I'm gonna leave it in my lap because I am going to get started on these sleeves tonight I swear um, really really excited to wear this in fact I'd love to wear it I'm going up to the mountains on New Year's and I would love to wear it on that trip so I might be jinxing myself and lending myself to procrastinating but I'm gonna set a deadline for myself, even though that stresses me out. By the New Year's Eve trip. All right, what else was on my needles? Oh, you guys haven't seen this one in a minute, um, probably since the very first episode, but I told you I did get new minis from a homespun house. And, oh no, I must have been in the middle of a row. Oh no. Yeah, it was. Oddly, I like started a row and didn't finish, I guess. <laughs> anyway, um, you guys haven't seen this since the very first episode of the podcast, but here it is in all its glory, kind of, because I'm stuck on, a mil on the middle of a row. One ginormous blanket that isn't even nearing its finish. Um, I am decreasing, but I. it'll be a while before this guy is done. I can't even express the amount of love I feel for this blanket, if I'm honest. Um, I think it's just super, super cool. I love seeing what color comes next. And the fact that I get a giant blanket out of it in the end is definitely exciting for me because as I've mentioned in the past I just don't knit blankets they can't keep my interest long enough but this one has so I'm kind of impressed so yeah that's the habitation throw I've mentioned that all of this yarn comes from a homespun house and it is um these are all minis that I get from being a patreon um, if you haven't heard of Patreon, it is essentially uh, like a YouTube for makers where you can actually pay them to see additional comment or content from them. So Molly does a ton of vlogging with her family. It's so fun and cute to watch. And then if you are one of their top tier Patreons, so I believe I pay $20, $20 to her. Um, if you're a top tier Patreon, $20, uh, you get a not only access to a plethora of wonderful content, but you also get three mini skeins per month. So I am adding all of my mini skeins to that blanket, which has been a lot of fun. I'm sipping on Tivana's apple cider tea and it is incredible. It's very good. Um, don't even have to put honey in it because it's got that, like, sweet undertone to it. I don't know if anyone will know what I'm talking about, but 
that's that. All right, I'm gonna end up mentioning Molly of a homespun house again when I talk about what I've been doing with my advent calendar. So, Molly is hosting a mystery knit along um, that I believe she's using her own advent yarn for, but you don't have to use hers. You can use whatever advent you have, which I'm doing. And it is a shawl that we are pleasantly plugging away at. I'm definitely behind, but that's okay. If you are knitting on Molly's mystery knit along, look away now, because I'm gonna show it. Pretty little shawl. So these are my advent minis in my advent calendar by um, Celeste of Sweet Nesting Yarn. And this is Molly's mystery knit along. I have hair in it. Does anybody else end up knitting hair into everything they knit? Because I definitely do. Um, that mystery knit along has been super fun so far. Like I said, I am behind, but I'm trying to catch up this week. Um, oh, by the way, if you're knitting it, you can look back now. I'm not showing it anymore. And that's it for works in progress. Next up, I have FOs. One I am super excited about, and that is the Hansholm sweater. Sleeves that fit, body that fits. For those of you who are new here, this is a sweater that I have been knitting for my partner, Christian, and it has been a labor of love. For those of you who don't know, men's sweaters are much larger than women's sweaters a lot of the time, and um, yeah. It's a lot of work to plug through that bad boy, but I finished it uh, honestly about an hour ago and I was so excited to have met my own deadline. If you watched the last episode, you know that I was planning on canceling Christmas if I didn't get that sweater done by this episode, so I made it happen. Um, he has tried it on. He hasn't tried it on with both sleeves fixed, but he's tried it on with one of the sleeves fixed and he loves it. I'm a little bit fearful of blocking, stretching it out too much. Um, so I'm going to try to gently block it after I finish filming here and we'll see how it goes. I am also one to, if blocking like makes something a little bit too big, I am one to throw it in the dryer. Um, and so far I haven't regretted that, so knock on wood. <laughs> My other finished object so cute. The Jessie May Ripple Butt Shorts. That's a stitch marker. You see the little red thing. But look how cute this I-Core drawstring is. I think I might need to make it a little bit longer, but that's okay. Again with the hair. I that knit hair and everything I own. Um, you might notice as I have one leg is definitely <laughs> It looks ridiculous on camera. Significantly longer than the other. So I'm gonna have to go back and fix that, which is fine. Um, it was just really funny because I had tried it on and everything and really did not notice until I was blocking it that the legs were quite different. So yeah, shouldn't be too hard to fix. Um, the hardest part is going to be to unpick the tubular cast off, but I've done that before and it's not a huge deal. So that'll be fixed. And that's it for finished objects. Obviously won't, they've been kind of taking up all of my time, which is fine. The other things I want to talk about are yarn acquisitions and plans for the future. So first of all, you all know I have an advent calendar. This advent calendar is by Sweet Nesting Yarn. Um, her first name is Celeste. I've mentioned this before, but you can find her on Instagram at Sweet Nesting Yarn. Um, and 
I think that's the only place you can find her because I don't think she has a website. She just takes custom orders through Instagram. I'm gonna dump them out and show them all to you. So I just unwrapped this one, which this is going to be um, a little bit of a dark horse. It was not one that I expected because it really doesn't fit with her usual aesthetic. I love it, but it doesn't fit. You'll see why. Celeste is known for a lot of gorgeous, bright colors. Mostly pinks, which I love. That one. This one's probably my favorite one. Blue. Yeah, so those are all the days up and through. Oh, I know I have one kicked up somewhere and then obviously the ones that are already on my shawl. But yeah, those are the days through today. It's been so excited to open these up day by day. I, I've spoken about this on Vlogmas many times, but it's my first advent calendar. And I, and I, I don't know that there will ever be a year that I don't do an advent calendar from now on. Um, I'm really, really, really happy that I did it. And I'm happy that I started with Celeste. In fact, you know, I definitely want to branch out and try other dyers, but I, Celeste might have me for the foreseeable Decembers because I've just been so happy with this advent calendar. I messaged her a couple of days ago to let her know just how over the moon I am with it because, wow. Also with stash acquisitions, I'm talking about a homespun house again because how can I resist? I got a sweater's quantity of Molly's DK Merino Cashmere yarn. And this is her colorway Poppy. Just this gorgeous like orange bright red gloriousness. This I believe is going to be a design for a cardigan that I haven't been thinking about because I've been thinking about everything else on my needles. Um, but yeah, I am excited to cast that on when I get a shot. The other bit of stash acquisition I got was something that I have been hoping to get my hands on for a long, long time, possibly years now. Um, it is Knit Collage yarn. I have never been able to order from Knit Collage um, because it's been a little bit out of my price range, but I finally got my hands on some and I'm so, so excited. Um, I got, I'll just show you. I got some of this gloriousness, which is her spun cloud base in, I believe the graphite colorway. Yep, this is graphite. It is sparkly, fluffy, textury goodness. And then on, let's see. Her wildflower yarn. This is Dusty Fleur. And together they will make a pixelated Cardi, which is one of her designs. I'll pop a picture right here. So yeah, really, really excited to try this yarn. In fact, I was thinking about what I would cast on for my Christmas cast on and this might be the winner. So we'll see. I'm really excited. At any Either way, I'm going to have to start, it smells good, <laughs> at any rate, I'm going to have to start um, swatching here in a minute, which I'm going to watch one of her videos on because these yarns, obviously this one especially, they aren't your traditional yarn and so I'm wondering how exactly you gauge a swatch, um, how you block more importantly, what, what exactly that process looks like. When I ordered this kit, she also sent me a link to her like class for the pixelated Cardi, which is really cool. So I can watch, see how she does it. She also, I think I was like the first 100 orders or something of that nature. So she also sent me a sampler skein of her daisy chain yarn, which has these gorgeous little embroidered daisies in them. 
in the yarn, which is incredibly cool. You can see another one right there. Very, very cool. I'm excited to try this. I don't even know what I can make with this, but either way. Um, that's it for yarn acquisitions. The last thing I was going to talk about is the welded cap by Fiber, Fiber for the People. I have been thinking about what I would use and I have some of this Malabrigos in my stash. Don't know the colorway, what's new. Um, but really, really excited to cast one for that when I get a moment to breathe. We'll see. I also noticed just now, obviously I'm out of practice because I did not mention what yarn I was using on any of my knits, um, except for the mystery knit along. But um, I have mentioned them quite a bit in previous episodes, so that information is definitely out in the world and I will be sure that it, that information is also in the show notes below. So if you're wondering what yarn I used, it is there, I promise. Um, yeah, that's it for knitting content. As for life things, um, I was sick the last couple of days, so I was planning a trip to Florida this weekend, um, came down with a fever really randomly uh, at like mid-afternoon on Friday, and obviously had to quarantine thinking that maybe it was um, COVID, and so I went and got tested. Definitely had a fever, but my test results say no COVID. It felt like it was probably just like your normal run of the mill head cold, um, but it was definitely a little bit, it freaked my family out a whole bit, a whole bunch. Um, but yeah, no COVID and I am feeling great today. As you can probably tell, I don't feel sick at all. Um, so yeah, I've been cooped up the last couple of days, but was able to get out and take Weston for a walk and get a little bit more energy behind me today. So I'm feeling good about that. Still bummed that I had to cancel my trip to see my friends, but it is what it is. Kind of related to my crafty creative endeavors, I ordered a watercolor set. I have never considered myself I never really considered myself artistic until I got into the fiber arts because I didn't think I could draw, didn't think I could paint. That was like definitely stuff I left to my sister who was an incredible artist. Um, but I'm realizing that like I was never good at those things because I just threw them down the second I realized I wasn't good at them and obviously art takes practice. So I thought I would get into uh, a bit of watercolor and just try my hand at it, practice. Be mindful of the fact that I'm not going to be good at everything right away and just see how it goes. So this is the first attempt. Again, definitely not the greatest drawer or the greatest painter, but we're gonna have some fun with it and just be creative with it. So I think actually, that's it for live stuff. I might hop on Skillshare here tonight and see what those wonderful makers have to offer me as far as watercolor goes. Um, just see what kind of lessons are up there. See what they have to offer. And I'm trying to make sure I didn't forget anything. I think that is it for our episode. Guys, thanks so much for joining me this week. I can't wait to film for you again next week. Um, if you haven't already, check out the Vlogmas episodes. Definitely like, like this video and subscribe if you haven't done that already. And then I hope you guys join me for the Christmas cow. Um, really, really, really excited about that. And I want to see your wonderful projects and faces around that group or that hashtag. So be sure to join. Can't wait. Bye guys.